comes here is when should you use the apex trigger in salesforce okay yes you must be aware about when should i go or when should i write the apex trigger so it is nothing like when you just need to update a single uh, field over a record you are writing a apex trigger okay so no this is not also a good practice if the things are possible using the point and click tools then first go with the point and click okay that is the standard tools which shares source provide like validations order and flows and all okay but if the things are not possible then we will going to go with the apex triggers okay so the first so the first point here is the complex logic so when the uh, flows can be the challenging to automate the complex task or the complex requirement then more it, and it might give you and it might give you the cpu limit exceed or might give you some runtime error so in this case for advanced and complicated tasks triggers are faster and more efficient to use okay so now next is execution order so salesforce execute event in a specific order okay a trigger helps control the order of event so salesforce execute event in a specific order okay so if you go through the so if you go through the execution order of salesforce so there you must have seen when my before and after trigger insert and when my automation tool standard tools used to run so if there is a requirement when so when there is a condition or when there is a requirement when i want to run my specific logic or code based on the execution order then we should run the execution order that is it should run at the time of before trigger or at a time of after trigger so in this case we can go with the execution or so in this case we can go with the apex triggers okay next is high data volume okay trigger can be effective when dealing with a large amount of data they are definitely worth considering especially if you are using a flow which tends to have difficulties handling the large amount of data like suppose if you are having a really large number of data and in future the number of records will be increased okay so in this case it is better to go with the triggers because in the flows also in future there might be possibilities we can get the if the logic is also complex so and the records are also increasing or the large number of records are there so in future there might be possible in flows we can get the cpu limit exceed error okay so in this case it is better to go with apex triggers okay and next is effective troubleshooting okay so so when we are using any automation tools or uh, flows so there the debugging process is not as much effective as compared to the triggers okay so if you are having the complex scenarios and you require the debugging to be effective so in this case also you can go with the triggers okay now the next there are the few points which we need to keep in mind while we are writing our trigger okay so first one is the bulkification okay your code should be bulkified what me what do you mean by this bulkifications your code whatever you are writing in the trigger should not handle or run only on the single record it should run on a multiple record your logic should be written in such a way it can handle the multiple records okay so bulkify means that your code can process multiple records at a time suppose your trigger initiate from a bulk dml in that case it must be able to process all the records of the collection rather than a single record as it usually does not does when initiated from the user interface okay so whenever we used to update or insert our record from the salesforce ui then only the single record we used to get in the triggers okay but what if i am inserting the excel sheet and also in this case there will be the multiple records so your code should never be so and if your code is written on a single object and if your code is written on a single record then it will going to throw an error okay so it is always to remember whatever you are writing in your trigger it should handle or it should be able to handle the multiple records now the next is running single trigger for each object okay so this is the next main point whenever you are writing a trigger just try to add a single trigger and for the different different conditions or for different requirement used to add different methods or different handlers into the single trigger only okay now the next is create handler okay so this i will show you when we will going to work on the scenarios and on the questions whenever we are creating a trigger 
do not to write logic directly into the triggers you we should use the handler and this handler we will going to add our logic and then these handlers are called from the triggers okay now next is less complexity okay try to avoid multiple loops and the inner loops if you it is nothing like you cannot uh, add the inner loops and the multiple loops but try to but try to add your code in such a way that you can avoid them as much as you can okay so these are the few points which we should keep in mind whenever we are writing our code okay okay so so whatever we have discussed till now these are the basic things which you should know before moving to the real time scenarios okay before moving to the questions or on the scenarios okay so if you are having any doubt in any of the question or any so if you are having doubt in any of the point we will going to discuss in the doubt class okay then next we will going to move with the scenarios using the before and the after triggers okay so we will going to cover uh, their the from simple to the complex scenarios and also give you the multiple scenarios to practice okay so then next see you will see you soon in the next doubt class till then take care goodbye thank you